I was granted access to the archive that was left by East Germany's notorious secret police, the Stasi. It's, it's material they collected uh, during their period of existence, which spanned like close to 40 years. And the picture shown here is from an observation on a post box where everyone who's, who mailed a letter, the picture was taken. This is pretty much what we expect surveillance to look like. I was very intrigued by finding material that represents the, the gaze of Big Brother. So we are talking about images and accept at the same time that we are talking about images we're not <laughs> able to see, which is kind of absurd. So we have to go back a quarter of a century now and to look at material that was taken in the 70s and 80s if we wanted to look at the real Big Brother without restriction. I think it's really interesting that to be able to see what's being collected, you have to go back. Uh, yeah, and the thing is, we had two opposing sides of the Cold War within one society, and they were struggling within Germany. And I tried for over a year to get my hands on material from the West German archive, and um, I spoke to some agents there, and one guy was quite frank and told me, of course the same stuff exists in our archive, but you will never be able to look at it because we decide to destroy it first. That's terrible in a way because that seems to prove our point that um, East Germany and the communists, they were terrible. They did terrible things. Because we can find easily, and we easily find the proof that they did these terrible things because this archive is open. The other archive remains closed. So there's no way for us to find the same points and to find the same terrible things they did. And the Stasi, they knew, they, they broke the law. They knew that. And um, they broke the law to um, defend the law, which sounds very uh, contemporary, I would argue, <laughs> because that's <laughs> almost every uh, secret service does and every police office tends to do. The history of surveillance goes back to the invention of photography. But the other issue is that, that you raised that I think is great is what happens to these images, how they get archived whether they're accessible or not, how long these archives are maintained. One of the big issues in terms of current imaging for things like red light cameras or um, body cameras is what happens to images as they get made, who gets access to them. One thing that I find just really interesting and valuable about Simon's project is this notion that we can use these historic images to think about what's going on right now. The images we tend to see today of surveillance of public spaces are produced by CCTV camps. And I tend to associate that kind of imagery, it's boring, it feels like nothing's happening even as we understand that that type of imagery is it's capturing because it's waiting for something to happen. But this image by contrast strikes me as very rich um, in detail, much more visually interesting. There's a real sense of uh, suspense and foreboding. So you get the sense that if you could just look closely enough at all of the details captured within this image, something sinister would reveal itself. We're looking at this picture of somebody posting a letter and it's reminding me of photographs made around the time of the Boston bombing where the police went back and looked for every frame that had a stray package in it. So you take these banal images and then go back in them and either manually or algorithmically search for what you're looking for. So it's an interesting, this is kind of an interesting harbinger of those kind of images.